Rise and Shine YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about the number one wired mouse in 2024. Yeah, people are still making wired mice and you know what? If they make them this good, I I wouldn't mind. This is the Endgame Gear OP18K. Yes, 8K and for me the 8K has ran flawlessly in Apex, the finals, Overwatch, everything under the sun. So Strap in and let's do what it do. All right, the video you guys have been waiting for the OP1 8K wired, right? This is from Endgame Gear. Endgame Gear did not send this out. This is something that I purchased myself. I did pick up the wireless version as well. That is already returned because the wired is just going to be much, much better performing, performing wise, right? Performance wise than the wireless version. Pretty much all in all, right? There's a lot more accessories you get with the wired one. The shape is the same, so you're not going to get any different shapes between the OP1 AK and the OP1 WE, right? But you get a lot of other things that I feel make this mouse much, much better. One, the weight. Now, the WE version, in my opinion, had a little odd weight balancing. It's kind of more heavier in the upper end. Right, it was kind of like a, it wasn't really balanced. Now, the wired version, the wired version is much, much better feeling in hand overall, weight wise. It is a lot, it feels much lighter, but the weight alone, like picking it up right in the middle, there's no slanting, there's no deviations, it feels spot on compared to the WE from what I was testing. Another thing that a lot of people are going to like are the clicks. Now, the opticals in the WE version were a little on the heavier end, right? But the clicks on here are the Go or the Cal Go mechanical clicks, and these feel incredibly snappy. They're crispy. I have no issues with post travel, pre travel, none of that. The scroll wheel is nice and tactile. You can feel each step. It is very kind of kind of like smooth, right? It's pretty. Pretty nice, right? I like it. I like the scroll wheel. Side buttons. Side buttons are nice and clicky. They're crispy. My only issue is that you can kind of see here that the front one doesn't protrude out on my copy as much as the back one does. It kind of goes into the mouse a little and towards the front compared to the back one, which is kind of... It protrudes out more than the front. So I just find it where I need to kind of hit it in the right spot to get a good feeling side click. But that's pretty much my only issue. The bottom skates, the small one. I didn't really like the small ones, right? I kind of felt like sometimes here and there it might make the mouse unstable. Like it was kind of like you get like a weird kind of like front end wobble. And I think that was because of the skate design. Um, because it only covered like half of the front up top. And it was just, I think it was kind of off. So it came with the larger skates. I immediately put those on. They feel much, much better. I like these on glass and on cloth pads, such as the Neptune, which is a speed pad. Screws. You got the screw holes, right? So you can easily get access into the mouse because you can swap out the clicks. But I find you don't even have to do any modding or any, anything with this mouse because it comes pretty much perfect out of the box. The clicks also have a very, very nice kind of like secret, not secret, but it's like a very technical kind of like upgrade between these versus a lot or most of the other clicks on the market. So with on the click kind of, you kind of have like a, like a little rubber band sitting before the mouse, kind of like the plastic hits the click, right? Which allows you to actually actuate the click much, much faster than a traditional mouse click. So I'm going to take you into the um, software so you can actually kind of see what I'm talking about. So within the software, right, you have, um, there is a firmware. So if you get the mouse, update, update the firmware version. But this is it. This is the software, right? It's super easy. It's nice and compact it's simple right lod i have one i have mine on one millimeter i don't care one millimeter two millimeter it doesn't really matter for me 
I am playing on 1200 DPI. I've been overall increasing my sense here and there. I have this just sitting on 4,000 4, hertz, just off gaming, right? I can put it to AK, and it does not do anything different with FPS, any issues or stuttering or anything like that. I have the slam click filter on. I obviously just unclick motion sync, which actually isn't turned on by default. And over here, you're going to see this SPDT. This is the kind of the click functionality, right? You have off, speed mode, and safe mode. So what the speed mode does, it allows that kind of like rubber band kind of part that you see on the click. If you open this up, I'm not going to do that. You have other channels that have done that. It allows that once that part hits the click, it actuates the click. That's speed mode. Safe mode, it kind of, what it's doing, it's sending back, like, it's pretty much double checking to make sure you hit the click. So once that rubber band hits, you're getting a double feedback, and I just got a follow on Twitch, so I appreciate whoever just followed. Awesome. Let's go. Clap for that. But with the safe mode, it allows it to kind of double check to make sure that you like it double checks to make sure you actually hit the click so it's not going to be as fast as speed mode but it is still very very quick so when you actually click the button you're still it's going to still feel as responsive as safe mode but it gives you that kind of extra teeny little teeny bitty ounce of just safety and kind of like gives you like that little tiny bit of like a buffer to allow the mouse to be like, oh, okay, he actually clicked it. Let's go ahead and initiate the click, right? So that's safe mode. And off, you just have just standard click, right? But I've been using it in safe mode. Um, I actually had Endgame Gear, and um, one of their guys that works for Endgame Gear, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name on Twitter, but it's um, had them come in and kind of explain it to me, and they actually prefer safe mode over speed mode themselves. So that is the software. Shape-wise, same thing as the same exact thing as a normal OP1, the wire. Now, a lot of people are going to not pick this mouse up because it simply is wired, and they're like, I can't go back to wired, blah, 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 blah. I find that kind of just kind of overdramatic because, one, this has a very, very nice stress relief. So I started playing this mouse on the Asus glass pad that I have, which will be in a review later on. And it felt wireless, right? You didn't feel any tug, any pull, anything like that while the cord is on the pad. I didn't have the bungee that I have right now. This, I just had this in my drawer. So on cloth, right? It still feels very, very, like, pretty much close to wireless. You don't really feel any of the drag. Sometimes, yes, the cord does sit on the pad itself, even in a bungee. But at the same time, it's not something that, for example, I just got the, the Ninjutsu, Sora, Ninjutsu Sora V2 in, and this doesn't have a stress relief where the cord connects to the mouse. So since this having such a better stress relief... It takes off a lot of pressure from the cord kind of connecting and you feel a lot less of that kind of tug and like cord actually laying on the pad itself. Now, glide wise, the skates are phenomenal. I have no issues. This mouse feels very, very nice and quick, nice and smooth glide on the Neptune. It was very quick on the glass pad. Had zero issues, right? Now between this and the um, wireless version. This also comes with a lot more accessories, which kind of baffled me because one, this mouse is cheaper than the wireless version, but it comes with better skate, right? It comes with two different size skates. The wireless one only came with the middle sensor, which was kind of weird. But inside the little package, you have much more stuff. One, you got grips. You don't get grips with the wireless version, unless mine just didn't come with what it's supposed to. You got the manuals. And you also have, if nobody has a screwdriver to get into their mouse to mod it, you got a screwdriver, right? This guy right here. That's awesome to see that come with a wired mouse because the skates don't block the screws. So you can leave the skates on and do what you got to do in order to mod the mouse. So all in all, in my opinion, 
this mouse is incredible, right? Shape, even for small hands, right? It is more of a claw-oriented shape. The front end is much more narrow. You don't have any weirdness going out the sides where the top half is wider and then the sides kind of concave, like the Atlantis Mini did. I hated that mouse. Didn't like the shape at all. I feel like they messed it up with the sides that they chose to go with, right? Kind of like the shape profile. Kind of, in my opinion, makes it a weird small mouse, right? The Atlantis Mini. But the OP1 AK is much, much better than a lot of the claw. I've been using this more than the X2 V2. I've been using this more than the LA1 because the sides are much more narrow. And it feels like a mouse pretty much made for smaller hands. What would I do now to change this mouse, right? I would probably make the mouse just slightly, slightly more short, just for my hand size alone, which is 16 by 9. But other than that, I wouldn't change anything. The clicks, the most hated clicks on the market, in my opinion, were the OP1WE because of how stiff they were and how heavy they were. These are using the CalGo um, MX switches, and these feel absolutely phenomenal they're nice and light they're clicky they feel very very good in hand which i mean it's insane right the cal gx switches which that is what they're using i don't know if i said it wrong a second ago but the cal gx switches are much better than their opticals they're much lighter right and with that kind of um Kind of like the buffer that I was talking about earlier, it makes the mouse feel very responsive. As soon as you click the mouse, it does what it needs to do. So, nice lighter clicks, really safe shape for small hands, insane performance out of the box, right? Make sure you do download the firmware from the website, just update it, that's all you gotta do. But other than that, I mean, hella good job, Endgame Gear, for bringing this mouse out, right? Now, I would like to see them do an 8K version wireless, right? And I would like to see them kind of, like, mess around with kind of the shape in general. Just do make, make it a little shorter for us small, tiny hand people, right? Because I feel like you do have a lot of mobility. But making it just a little shorter, it will be also viable for fingertip grip, which, I mean, you can do it here because of how... Low the hump is, but I find this to be a much better claw shape in general. So, there you have it. The OP1 8K review. Solid shape. I highly recommend it. It isn't, it's under $100, which, I mean, yes, it is wired, but this wire is much, much better than most of the wires on the market. So, good shape, good wire, good skates, plentiful a good array of accessories that you need for a mouse and it's just good right shapes good everything else is phenomenal so kudos to endgame gear for making a solid one of the best wired wired mice on the market right it, if it, it's in my opinion probably going to be the wired mouse that i would go for over any other wired mouse right but that's it op1 ak complete love you guys rise up God bless. See you for the next one. I see your toes! I see your toes! I see your toes! I'm the winner. Oh! He's cracked. I hit him. Don't push that. One drops. Right here. Correct.